wave boundary behavior. So this little virtual simulation lab here um, explains that as a wave travels through a medium, it'll often reach the end of a medium and encounter an obstacle or perhaps a different medium uh, through which it could travel. All right. Now the behavior of that wave upon reaching the end of a medium is referred to as a boundary behavior. So in this activity, we are going to uh, technically we have four cases. Um, fixed end reflection, free end reflection, change of medium from thinner to thicker, and then thicker to thinner. We will have on here as well. Um, so in case one, a fixed end reflection. So we are going to send a pulse, like you would send if you had a rope, all right, that was attached to a pole. If you were to, like one of those big heavy ropes that you would, you know, sometimes see guys or girls lifting. Right, doing like the little up and down thing, and they, you can see like the pulse is sliding down to the end. So it's something like that. So when they say an incident pulse would be like, that's what the, the pulse that you're creating. That's going to be the pulse that we are creating. So it's introduced at the left end of the rope, and it travels through towards the right end of this medium. Now, this pulse is called the incident pulse. In this case, we are going to see that it's securely attached to it, uh, a pole here, and it is tied, so it's not going to be moving. First thing, it wants you to predict what would happen as this pulse hits this fixed end, and then write it below. So this is just what you would think would happen. No necessary prior knowledge. There's no right or wrong answer here. What do you think would happen, guys, as this pulse hits that fixed spot? Do you think it's going to reflect back at all? Do you think it's just gonna, the rope just comes to a, a complete stop? What do you think happens? What do you think happens? Again, there's no wrong, right or wrong answer. All right, but type in everyone, please, what you guys have there. What do you think is gonna happen? Whether it's going to reflect back, whether it's going to be the same height, right, or amplitude, because it's, it's going to have the same amplitude, what's going to happen? And then number two is going to ask us to open the simulation. Open the simulation and uh, turn off the component feature. Describe what you observe. And does this behavior uh, in the simulation agree with your prediction. Okay, so we're going to open that up. All right, how did I get that? It's that link here that was attached, okay, embedded in here. Um, and we want a fixed end, correct? We want fixed end and turn off component feature. So that's what's going to happen. Here's our incident pulse, the one that goes all the way down. And then, what would we call that wave, do you think? That yeah, it's going to be a reflected wave or a reflected pulse. So number two is just, it says open the simulation, run this, uh, this guy here, and Describe what you observe. What do you observe? Give me some of the things you guys think. Yeah, you see. What's going on here? Hmm? There's a pattern, but let's just say this is the, this is the start, right? We like we just basically take the rope, do a quick whip up, and now that pulse is what travels. It hits the end, which is fixed, and now what happens? It reflects back. Okay, is that going the same speed, do you think? Does it look like it's the same height? Um, is it the same wavelength? What what do we got going on here? What do you think? All right, that's basically what you're writing down in your observations. Okay, so you guys should have something written down for number one and number two now. For number three, though, how does the speed 
of the reflected pulse compared to that of the incident pulse. Okay, so for number three, guys, I'm not typing this out. You have to pay attention to, to get this, okay? So number three, how does the speed of the incident pulse compared to that of the reflected? So the reflected was which one? One that's above or underneath? Yep. Yeah. All right, so this is the start. It's a crest, and it hits here and bounces back as a trough. What about the speed, though? Yeah, looks the same. So we're going to say that the speed of the reflected pulse is the same as the incident pulse. Okay, so number three, the speed of the reflected pulse is the same as the incident pulse. Okay. How does the wavelength of the reflected pulse compare to that of the incident pulse? Let's see. Here's our wavelength. Now, this isn't a complete wavelength. This is half a wavelength, but... If I were to put in these little marks here, right, at this half wavelength and at this half wavelength. All right, now let's start this. Yeah, we're going to say it has the same wavelength. So you literally you can copy and paste your answer if you wrote the previous one, right, if you wrote it out as a complete um, sentence. The speed of the reflected pulse is the same as the incident. Now you can just replace that with wavelength. The wavelength of the re reflected pulse is the same as the incident pulse. So for number four, the wavelength of the reflected pulse is the same as the wavelength of the incident pulse. You have learned that a wave is an energy transport phenomenon. Okay, which characteristic of a wave directly related to the energy of the wave? Hmm. Not sure, right? Okay, back from back from our notes. Back to our notes, guys. Hmm. Yep. Amplitude is an indication of energy, power, or strength of a wave. Okay, the the larger the amplitude, the louder a sound would be. The higher the amplitude, the brighter something could be. All right, so amplitude is going to be our our dude telling us the amount of energy this thing is carrying. Okay. Hmm. Number five is the amplitude. So literally you could just do this, right? It says what characteristic of the wave is directly related to the energy. I would just like copy this and just say or copy of a wave and just write amplitude and then copy that and paste it. Just get rid of the question mark. That way it answers it completely and looks nice. What happens to the energy? of the incident pulse as it reaches the boundary. Where does the energy go? Does the energy disappear? Okay, well with this one, looking at the amplitude, hmm, let me see if this works. It doesn't look quite as large. It doesn't look quite as large. So what what happens? Most of the energy gets reflected back, but it's going to lose some of it. Now, it can't just disappear because law of conservation of energy says, all right, energy can never be created nor destroyed, but it can transform or be transferred. So if 
on the, our picture here, all right, the rope is attached to this pole. What do you think, or where does some of the energy go? Good, yeah. Some of the energy um, gets transferred to the pole, which would cause the pole to vibrate. So that's what we're going to write. Okay, some of the energy gets transferred to the pole, causing the pole to vibrate. Some of the energy gets transferred to the pole, causing the pole to vibrate. And that's why it's not going to have the exact amount of amplitude on the way back. Does the energy disappear? No. Again, we said that before, energy is not just going to be all of a sudden magically disappear. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Number two. For case two, they want to know what happens if the rope at the end is free to move. So there's like a little ring attached to this pole that allows the, the rope to either slide up or slide down as necessary. So instead of being securely attached, it is fit loosely around and all right, it's kind of loose. So because it's able to move when a disturbance reaches it, we call this a free end. So predict, what do you think would happen to the wave pulse, right, or that incident pulse as it hits this free end? What do you think is going to happen? Is the ring going to move up? Is it going to move down? How is it going to get reflected? On the same side, underneath, how do you think it's going to be reflected? So everyone, please type in something here for number one. It's a prediction based off of what you've seen so far or prior knowledge, right? Have you ever done this with a rope before? Okay. So we are now going to switch this to free end. Let's get rid of the components here. Aha. Okay, so here comes our crest, our incident pulse. Here's our little ring that's free freestanding. Slide is up, slides back down, and then we get a reflected wave. It's on the same side this time. The other time it was underneath, right? When it was fixed, the crest became a trough on the way back here. Starts as a crest and gets reflected back, right, as a crest. See that? Okay, so then for number two, basically you guys are just writing what you observe. What you observed. Does this agree with your prediction? So how what, what would you say you observe? What are we observing here? Something along the lines of that the incident pulse hits this all right, free end or free boundary. The ring slides up and then comes back down to its original position and causes a reflection of the wave that's on the same side. Something along those lines. Number three, what will happen if instead of a crest, a trough is the incident wave? So basically, instead of sending down a crest, if we sent down a trough, how would it be reflected back? Well, look at the first one. This is a crest, and it's being reflected back as a crest. So if you sent down a trough, it would reflect back as a trough.
And number four, uh, how does the speed of the reflected pulse compare to the speed of the incident pulse? All right, well, here's our reflected. Let's look at the incident. I think that, yeah, pretty much the same. Good. So the speeds will be the same for the reflected pulse and the incident pulse. The speeds will be the same for number four. The speeds will be the same for number four. The speeds will be the same for the reflected and incident pulse. Now, going back to case one for a second, fixed and reflection, guys, that the um, the physics classroom, has, again, is a great resource for you guys to use. Okay, it kind of explains everything else that you need. Um, so it gives you a little talk and information about fixed and reflection. So a portion of that energy, okay, is left off, all right, after bouncing off a pole. Um, so some of that energy is transmitted to the pole, causing it to vibrate, okay, even though they're not completely visible or super obvious. But that energy does need to move somewhere. Um, and it talks to you about other characteristics here, that the speed of the reflected pulse is the same, the wavelength was the same, the amplitude was going to be wound up a little bit less. Okay, why? Because it loses a little bit of energy by transferring it to the pole. And then it goes through like another video of you can seeing it. Uh, and then it has our free end reflection. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is a transmission of a pulse across a boundary from a less dense to more dense medium. So now we are going to be into case three. So looking at case three, you have a thin rope attached to a thick rope. Each rope is held at opposite ends by students. So suppose that the student holding the less dense end, the thinner side of it, sends down a pulse towards the more dense medium, all right, towards the thicker end of the rope. What you guys are going to do is predict what do you think will happen as this pulse hits the more dense? Is, the, is, this, is this pulse going to completely trans go all the way through to this side? Is some of it going to get reflected back? Is it going to be the same size? Is it going to move slower or faster? Th those are the kinds of things that I want you to, to try and give a guess on. Do you think that it's going to be the same height? Is it going to have the same amplitude? Is it going to be moving at the same speed? So hopefully you guys have something written down here for number one and now for number two. Now we're going to select the thinner to thicker and describe what we see. All right, so you guys are going to now describe what we see, thinner to thicker. All right, so this is where you guys are going to describe what you are seeing. So this is in case, again, this is case three. This would be number two. You're just writing down what you observe here. Now here, I want you guys to look at this. So here's the transmitted pulse. I'm sorry, the uh, incident pulse. Why is because it's the beginning guy. When something gets bounced back, what do we call that? We called it reflected. Well, does is anything reflected? No. Here's the incident. You can see that yeah, some of the energy is going through to the thick end, but notice 
It's this guy right here. Would you say that's a little bit of a, a peak or a trough? Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit of a trough. So there is a reflected wave. So some of the energy gets reflected back into, in, back into the thin rope. But it looks like a majority of it goes through to the thicker rope. Now, I'm going to turn on the components so we can see this as well. So the white is our incident rope, our, our incident pulse. The red will be reflected. And the blue is what gets transmitted through to the thick side. Aha. OK. So with that, how does the speed of the reflected pulse compare to that of the transmitted? OK, again, red is reflected, blue is transmitted. How do those speeds compare? Which one's moving faster or and or slower? The blue is the transmitted, the red is the reflected. Hmm? Yeah. Good. All right. So we're going to say that the um, reflected pulse is moving faster than the uh, transmitted pulse. So for number three, how does the speed of the reflected pulse compare to that of the trans... The reflected pulse is traveling faster than the transmitted pulse. Okay. Now, the next one asks number four. How does the frequency of the reflected pulse compare to the frequency of the transmitted pulse? How do we think? How does the frequency compare? So what I'm going to do is, again, go to this physics classroom spot here. Here we are in going from a thin or less dense to a more dense. All right, so it's telling us that the transmitted pulse is slower, so that's right. We said that the reflected was moving at faster speed. Um, but what about our frequency, right? Is that what? That's exactly what we're looking for. How is the frequency? So let's take a look. Control F for So what do we got going on here? OK, this is telling us here, it depends on the properties of the medium. In this case, the transmitted and reflected pulses are traveling in two different media. The waves always travel fastest in the less dense medium. Thus, that's why the reflected pulse is traveling at a faster speed than the transmitted. All right, so that's why the reflected is moving at a faster speed than the transmitted. Okay, so that helps us out before we answered before. Now, second, the particles in the more dense medium will be vibrating with the same frequency as the particles in the less dense medium. Since the transmitted pulse was introduced into the more dense medium by those um, by the vibrations of the particles in the less. So they must be vibrating at the same frequency. All right, so. The reflected and transmitted pulses have different speeds, but the same frequency. So that's what we're gonna we're gonna have in. Okay. How does the frequency of the reflected compare to that of the transmitted? 
what we're going to type in. They have the same frequency. They have the same frequency. How does the wavelength compare? How does the wavelength of the reflected compare to that of the wavelength of the transmitted? Well, let's see. How does the wavelength look? Now, this is just half a wavelength, but which one has the greater half, the red or the blue? Red. The red has a longer wavelength. You're looking at, you're thinking amplitude. You're thinking amplitude. Yeah, it has more height. It has more height, so it technically is carrying more energy. But this guy has a longer wavelength. So, right, a wavelength is like this looking thing. Pardon my terrible drawing. All right, so if that's essentially a wavelength, this dude has a longer half wavelength than this guy does. So we would say, how does the wavelength of the the wavelength of the reflected pulse is greater than the transmitted? The wavelength of the reflected pulse is greater than the wavelength of the transmitted pulse. The wavelength of the reflected pulse is greater than that of the transmitted. So since these two things had the same frequency, the dude that wind up having the longer or larger wavelength was going to wind up having the greater wave speed. Which one did we say moved the fastest, the reflected or the transmitted? Which one? The reflected. So do we remember our equation for wave speed? V is equal to... Wavelength times bleh, God, that's so terrible. Wavelength times frequency. If they both have the same frequency, if we hid that, then that would mean what? If I took away and pretend that frequency wasn't there for a second, because if they have the same frequency, so what does this tell you? The one that has the greater wavelength is going to have the greater speed. Which one had the greater wavelength? The reflected red or the transmitted blue? Which one had the greater wavelength? Blue. The red. What? Right? It's, yeah, the red, what we just said. So because of that, it has a greater wavelength. It would have the greater speed. All right, hopefully you guys see that. How does the amplitude of the reflected pulse compare to the amplitude of uh, the transmitted pulse? All right, well, let's take a look. Here is our incident. Now, amplitude is from resting position to the crest or resting position to the trough. So if the yellow is our resting position, I'm just going to extend that line with blue, this dark blue. Which one has a greater distance from the center line to either the bottom of the trough or to the top of the crest? Red or blue? Blue. Okay, so blue is the transmitted pulse. So the transmitted pulse has a larger amplitude. Okay, so we're going to say that the transmitted pulse has a larger amplitude than the reflected. All right. Okay, moving on to case four. Moving from a thicker 
to a thinner rope. Moving from a thicker to a thinner rope. What do you think here is going to happen? Number one, predict. What do you think would happen if we made this pulse from a thicker rope to a thinner rope, a less dense medium? Mm, what do we think is going to happen here? Faster. All right, so then write it down. What do we think is going to – I want you to mention something that happens to – what do you think will happen to the amplitude to and to the speed? And do you think there's going to be any reflected pulse? Okay, so after you guys write down what you think is going to happen, now we're going to select uh, – let me get rid of all that. Thicker to thinner. Whoa, buddy. So here is our incident wave, the white. And what happens here? Dang. Okay. So, so what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we what do we observe here? That Yeah. The amplitude of the transmitted wave is larger than the incident. Incident. Right, so the incident is like our, our first pulse that we send down. So that was the white guy. It hits, okay, it slides this dude up and swing, bam. Now the amplitude seems to be larger going on here. So type in guys what we think we observe. What do we think about the speeds, amplitudes? What about the reflected? What about the reflected pulse? Is it on the same side? Is it underneath? Is it moving the same speed as the incident? Slower, faster? Whatever you guys have or observe there, that's what we're going to write in. That would be for two. Now for three, how does the speed of the reflected pulse compare to that of the original, which is the transmitted? How do we, how do we think? So the white and red, how do we think their speeds? Yeah, I would too. Yeah, I would too. So I would say that um, – Hmm. The blue kind of looks faster. It's the, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the transmit in a second, but what about the red and white? So the speed is going to be the same. So how does the speed and this dude relate? That was for number four. No, that's three. How does the reflected – I'm sorry. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I read that wrong? How does the speed of the reflected pulse compared to the speed of the incident pulse? No, I was thinking – I thought I said incident. Wow, I, I misread that. It's asking it to compare it to the speed of the transmitted. So comparing the red to the blue, that would be my fault. What will happen if instead of a passage – Okay, so I apologize for that. So how does the speed of the reflected compare to that of the transmitted? So the reflected is red, 
transmitted is blue. How do those two speeds compare? The blue is faster, right? So then we would say that the transmitted pulse is faster than the reflected. So everyone can please make sure you write that in. For three, the speed of the transmitted pulse is faster than the reflected pulse. How does the frequency of the reflected pulse compare to the frequency of the transmitted pulse? It's the same thing as what you guys had uh, for number four on case three. All right, the frequency is going to be the same. The particles vibrating in this one are going to cause the other one to vibrate at the same frequency. So the frequency is going to be the same. The frequency will be the same. You can just simplify it there. All right. Frequency will be the same? Yeah. For the, the last one? For number four. The frequency will be the same. And again, it kind of has to deal with what we were talking about before. Um, where the particles, all right, in the one medium are causing the others to vibrate, they're vibrating at the same frequency. So again, like that equation I showed before, with V is equal to lambda times frequency, wave speed, the one with the bigger wavelength is therefore going to have the greater speed. So let's take a look. Number five, how does the wavelength of the reflected compare to that of the transmitted? Nope, that's not the one. How does the wavelength compare? Which one's larger? Yeah, the transmitted. The transmitted pulse has a larger wavelength than the reflected. So number five, the transmitted pulse has a larger wavelength than the reflected pulse. This is case four, number five. So that's what you would want to type in, okay? Transmitted pulse has a larger wavelength than the reflected pulse. How do you explain the fact that the transmitted pulses are never inverted? Hmm. Let's see. And we wanted to know, how do we explain the fact that the transmitted pulses are never inverted? Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. It would say... So as this is going on, all right, so since this more dense medium originally at rest has an upward pull, it can do nothing but cause an upward displacement. So the, transmit is, the transmitted pulses will never be inverted. Because they're going to wind up going in the same direction as their original displacement. So our, once it hits this boundary, all right, in both cases, thicker to thinner or thinner to thicker, the original displacement is upward. So they're not going to be inverted because they're going to go with the, how do we want to say this? They're going to be in the same direction as the displacement of the incident pulse. It's going to be in the same direction as the displacement of the original pulse. 
Not sure yet. Hmm? Yep. I appreciate it. We'll just kind of finish off like that. How do you explain the fact that the transmitted pulses are never inverted? Uh, they're going to be in the same direction as the displacement of the incident pulse. And in each case of these, the incident pulse all right, was an upward pulse. So that is why all right, the transfer um, yeah, our transmitted pulse is going to be uh, upright. And then if you did it also this way, your initial displacement is upright, so it's going to continue. Now, if they were, if the initial pulse or the incident pulse was underneath, then they would be in the same direction. They would be underneath as well. All right, guys.